What was it like at the end of the last dispensation? In other words, as it was transitioning into the New Testament, what was the atmosphere like? What was the emotional state of those early believers in Jesus Christ? We're going to go through Luke chapter 24 today, a, a verse by verse study of Luke 24. But I'm going to bring up seven points. I'm going to tell you what they are before we go through this, and you can spot them as we're going through. Uh, the emotions that they had. Number one, you had doubt. Uh, number two, shock at current events. Number three, confusion. Number four, fear of the lost. Number five, depression. Number six, difficulty serving the Lord. And number seven, joy and understanding when Jesus appeared. All right? Should be an interesting study as we go through this and look for some instruction in righteousness for us today as Christians as we're waiting for uh, Jesus Christ to catch us up and take us out of this earth as the uh, what many call the church age is ending. And uh, like I said, going to be an interesting study. Luke chapter 24, verse 1. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. They were used to seeing Jesus. They were not living by faith. They were seeing him on a day-to-day -day basis. And now they found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Kind of like what we have to deal with today. We don't see Jesus Christ. We have to live by faith. Hmm. Verse 4, And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Kind of interesting, you know. Again, like Christians today, why seek ye the living among the dead? You know, we, we are the living among the dead. The lost world out here. Verse 6. He is not here, but is risen. Is that true for us today? Absolutely. Jesus is not here right now. He's risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Jesus spoke those things to them, and yet they were starting to doubt the words of Jesus, weren't they? Yes, they were. Verse 8, And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulcher, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and, mother, and Mary the mother of James, and other women, women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Uh, let me tell you something, brethren. Sometimes you're going to get a little bit uh, depressed and down. Sometimes you're going to start to have temptations to doubt what the Bible says. It gets rough sometimes in this life. Sometimes, you, you know, the Lord's giving you the victory and you're, you're, you know, witnessing to people and you really are excited for the things of the Lord. And other times you just look at this world and things are going bad and health is having problems and whatever else and, you know, financial difficulties and whatever. And you start to kind of get a little bit of doubt coming in, a little bit of depression. Yeah. Verse 12. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulcher, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. Why was he wondering? He was told Jesus was going to rise from the dead. He looks and he says, I wonder what that means. <laughs> you know what it means. Jesus told you what it means. What was the problem? He was doubting Jesus' words. It can happen to anybody. And Peter was a great man. Certainly, a very, very wonderful man. Wasn't the first pope, sorry to the Catholics, but Peter was a great man, and yet he was starting to doubt the words of Jesus Christ. And it wasn't doubting the words that he was holding in his hands. He had Jesus speaking directly to him, face to face. And he still doubted the words of Jesus. Hmm. Can happen to anybody. Verse 13, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about threescore furlongs. And they walked together, and, and they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Very interesting, because you'll find that 
the sweetest thing that you have in this life, other than the Bible itself, is that spirit of fellowship that we have as Christians. And you get to talk to, to another Bible believer and you just start to bring up things that are going on in your life and things, current event type of stuff and prophetic type of things being fulfilled and, and you're reasoning together. And it's interesting because it says uh, right there, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Um, that's before they had the Holy Spirit of God living inside of them. All right. This is still all just new things there. You know, they aren't even converted yet. And, but it's, how about today? You know, um, how much more so today with the Holy Spirit of God lives within us. So as you're talking Christian to Christian and having that spirit of fellowship, the Holy Spirit's also going to be there to say, hey, I'm going to give you some feelings. And I'll tell you right now, there's times as a Christian that you'll really feel down and just talking to another Christian is really going to lift your spirit. Why? Where two or three are gathered, there am I in the midst of them, the Bible talks about. I, you know, I, I condemn church buildings, all right? I don't condemn Christian fellowship. A lot of people try to put that on me, that I'm, we're trying to live in a, you know, remote location and we don't want any contact with other people. No, we don't mind contact with other saved believers, but they're just really hard to find nowadays. <laughs> uh, but let's continue. Um, and we certainly love to fellowship with brethren. Absolutely. Verse 16, But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. Very interesting. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have said, or that ye have one to another, as ye walk and are sad? See the sad there? They're depressed. And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And I love Jesus' response. Classic here. And he said unto them, what things? <laughs> he knew. <laughs> they were talking about him. They were talking about him, his death on the cross, and, and he was buried, and they didn't understand the resurrection, even though they're seeing it, and the angels are there telling him he was supposed to rise from the, get, the dead the third day, and here he is. He's walking with them, and you know Jesus plays it cool, and he says, uh, what things? Yeah, you know, He lets them hang themselves, in other words. Verse 19, And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. They saw the deeds that Jesus did, in other words. Uh, verse 20, And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Um uh, but we trusted it had been he which should have redeemed Israel? What are they saying? They're doubting Jesus. Hey, he died on the cross just like he said it was going to happen and he was buried, but we're kind of a little bit upset because we thought he was the one. I'm not so sure now. Did you ever get there, Christian? Did you ever get to the point where you actually start to doubt the Bible? And you start to say, uh, Maybe some of these post-trib rapture arguments are kind of convincing me a little bit, and maybe the Bible, maybe dispensational teaching is false, and maybe, I don't know, maybe is, it, is there really a God? What are you doing? You see, I believe as this dispensation is ending, the Old Testament there is ending, that you have, the Old Testament technically ended with John the Baptist. Law and the prophets are until John, and since that time the kingdom of heaven is preached. You know, You have that there, that little time period there, a little you know, period there where Jesus Christ is on the earth. But at the end of that thing, Jesus dies on the cross and it brings in the New Testament. The New Testament begins with the death of the testator according to Hebrews chapter 9, all right, verse 15 through 17. You can read that. The New Testament doesn't begin in Matthew chapter 1. Very important to understand. But you have this time period where things are ending, things are starting to change, and what happens? They're feeling, hey, what we're doing right now is about to change. It's ending. And they're kind of confused. What should we be doing? I don't know. You know, Christians in the past would have fought. You know, I do believe Christians in America fought a lot of times to keep the nation pure and whatever else. And they would fight things, uh, you know, whatever kind of laws, wicked laws that were coming out. And uh, now it's just to the point we realize we can't fight it anymore. 
we can't turn back this nation and bring mighty revival and all this stuff. We, we're not going to. It's not going to happen. The Bible says it's not going to happen. And you look out and you say, we don't have another 100 years out there in the future. You're, and you're just kind of looking around every day. You, you get up sometimes and you think, is it going to be today? Is the Lord going to catch us up today? You know, that's fine to, to be earnestly expecting Jesus Christ. But where the problem comes in is when you start to doubt his word. I thought it was pre-trib rapture. I thought he was coming back for his bride. I, I don't know now. See, that's the problem here. It's, not, it's no sin for them to say, I'm a little bit depressed and I'm a little bit sad and I sure wish Jesus would come back and whatever. There wasn't any sin there. The sin came that they were actually now starting to doubt if he was actually the Messiah. There's no doubt or there's no sin there if you start to say, I wonder what's taking the Lord so long. Why hasn't the rapture happened yet? I don't get it. There's no sin there. The sin comes in when you start to say, maybe it is post-trib pre-wrath, or maybe we do get to see the Antichrist, or, or maybe, and you start to give up the beliefs that you've held for years and years and years and been convinced of from the Scriptures. I've got over 120 sermons proving what people call the pre-trib rapture. I call it the catching up before the, the time of Jacob's trouble. That's more accurate, but... The pre-trib rapture has been proven over and over and over again. So many scriptures to confirm it. And yet you have people that stuck with it for years and years and years, and now they start to say, I don't know. Maybe it's not true. Why? Dispensation's ending. Things are changing. You know, and you kind of start thinking, what part do I play in this world? You know, there's not much for me here. You know, John the Baptist says about Jesus, you know, he's talking in one times and he said, I'm a friend of the bridegroom, you know, and he said, he must increase and I must decrease. Yeah. Guess what? The Jews over in Israel must increase. They're coming on the news more and more. There's more and more stuff about them. The hatred of the Jews in this nation is increasing and the body of Christ is decreasing. And as we're decreasing, we're getting stronger because now the fakes are starting to fall away right and left. Those that have the spirit of Antichrist, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. Yeah. I can't tell you how many people I once thought were saved, and now I know now they're definitely lost. They've just totally gone off the deep end. Yeah. But you can't let that get you down to the point where you start to deny that Jesus Christ is going to catch us up. You start to deny what you've been taught and been assured of in the Scriptures. But let's continue. Verse 22. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at this sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Are they living by faith or by sight? They're wanting to live by sight. And it's ironic because they're literally talking to Jesus and their eyes aren't understanding it's him. Hmm. Jesus is trying to teach him a little lesson there. You're going to have to live by faith. But uh, what's Jesus' reaction? Verse 25. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. He rebukes him. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Jesus fulfilled a lot of the prophecies of the Messiah that's coming. They're waiting for the Messiah. Jesus fulfills it. And then they're saying, I don't think he was the Messiah. That's a problem. You say, wait, you, you said he filled a lot, fulfilled a lot of the prophecies? Don't you mean all? No, because a lot of those prophecies are going to be fulfilled at the second coming. The Jews rejected Jesus Christ at his first coming. But when he comes back at the second coming, after the book of Revelation, after the time of Jacob's trouble is completed, then he brings in the new covenant. And all Israel is saved at that point in time. Again, I've done other studies on that. But uh, let's continue. Verse 28, And they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. 
and went and he went in to tarry with them. Interesting because Revelation chapter three ends with, uh, "If any man, you know, hear my voice, you know, and hear me knocking, essentially, I'm paraphrasing here, I will come into him." You know, hmm. Personal fellowship, personal relationship, not religion, in other words. Uh, verse 30, And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. I thought that was kind of an interesting little thing there. He vanished out of their sight. Hmm. Kind of like what's going to happen to us soon. The day is going to come when we're going to vanish out of people's sight. Hmm. Rather interesting. Uh, see, because we're part of the body of Christ. So, a lot of interesting little things there. Verse 32, And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn with us, within us while, we talked with, while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the Scriptures? If Jesus Christ doesn't open these Scriptures to you, you're not going to understand them. It's plain and simple. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. You know, they're just not getting it, you know? Kind of like us today, in a lot of ways. You go through, you know, you go through these times of, of, I'm assured, I feel great, you know, Lord's coming soon, you know, and you're all happy and everything, and then you just go back into the depression thing sometimes again. Yeah, you know, he's appeared to them. They, they're, they're all excited. He's, he rose from the dead, and he shows up, and they, ah, you know, <laughs> something else. Verse 38, and he said unto them, why are you troubled? <laughs> and why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. And when, it, when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? Huh. And while they believed not for joy, they're happy, and yet there's still doubts. They're still doubting. Really something. Verse 32, And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish in an oven honeycomb, and he took it, and did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the Scriptures. Again, this you see it there. If the Lord doesn't open your understanding, if you're not born again, you're just not going to get the Bible. That's, you're not going to understand it. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and ye are witnesses of these things. If you're not preaching repentance as part of your gospel, you're not saved. Verse 49, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high, and he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. And of course, they were there in the temple early on, the Jewish temple, because the Jews were given another chance. After Jesus rose from the dead, they're given another chance to accept him as their Messiah. That's what the book of Acts is about, transitions from going to the temple and the synagogue there, and dealing with the Jews, to now dealing with the Gentiles. And years and years and years, those Jews are given another chance. They rejected him again. That's why they were there in the temple. doesn't mean it was First Baptist Temple or something like that. <laughs> okay, you got to get a hold of that. But uh, interesting, and it came to pass, verse 51, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. Who was he parted from? Jews. Um, what are we, as Christians? We're members of the body of Christ. Uh, the day is going to come when we will be parted from them, those Jews. The Jews that are living all around the world and things, but a lot in Israel. Um, and uh, what are we supposed to do? 
He blessed them. You know we're supposed to be a blessing to the nation of Israel? It just comes as a natural thing when you're saved, when you're born again. You want to have a blessing on those people over there. It, it'll grieve your heart when you hear them say all kinds of nasty stuff about the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't deny that. I don't deny, well, they don't say anything bad. They don't hate Jesus. Oh, they hate Jesus. A lot of them do these rabbis and things. They hate Jesus' guts. And it should vex you. It should, it should upset you. Like seeing a, a good friend going the wrong way. You know it's gonna, that friend is going to be punished. The vast majority of Jews are going to get killed in the time of Jacob's trouble. They have some real bad stuff coming to them. That should upset you as a Christian. You shouldn't take joy in that. You shouldn't say, I can't wait for them to be just destroyed and whatever else. You should bless them right up until the time we get called up. We part from them. Um, I just wanted to make this study just to encourage you out there as Christians. I know, I know I've been through some times and I've written back and forth and talked to you and whatever else, a lot of you, and, and it, it just those days come up where you just think, how can I keep doing this? I, I don't understand. And you say, brother, I... I don't know what to do. I kind of got away from the Lord a little bit there. And, and uh, I got to listen into this wrong guy and that bad guy. And I don't know why I did that. And it really caused me some confusion and some doubt. And What if the Lord doesn't come back? And you start to have these questions in your mind. Um, why? I believe, believe because the dispensation is ending. We're not going to be here much longer. Could be years yet. I have no idea. But the whole point I'm trying to make is we're not going to be seeing mighty revival. We're not looking and saying, wow, things are just going to get better and better for the church. Well, not on this earth they're not going to. Things are going to get better and better for the church in the sense of we're going to get to see Jesus Christ before real long. But as far as massive revival and getting all kinds of work done and bringing America back to a godly nation, and, nope, nope, not going to happen. It's not prophesied to happen, okay? There's a falling away that happens. That's prophecy. The time comes when they will not endure sound doctrine. There you go. Uh, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. There you go. Those are the prophecies of what the church has to look forward to. Okay? But this whole thing of, of uh, you know, it's getting better and it's going to get better and we're going to get massive work done for the Lord and a great soul winning it. it um, the people are claiming to get thousands of, of souls saved, they're lying. It's not going to happen. No way. Um, so that's going to be it. I just wanted to make this to encourage people. Uh, so, um, this is actually the depth of snow here, by the way. This is not piled up. This is how much snow we have just here, backyard. So, just anybody that was wondering, you know, yeah, we get a lot of snow here. But, uh, I do hope that this has been an encouragement to you. Uh, stand by the book. When those doubts start to arise and you start to say, I wonder, are we really going to be leaving before the Antichrist shows up? Yes. It's been proved. It's been confirmed for many, many years. I've preached on it many sermons. Um, is the King James Bible really God's perfect word? Absolutely. Don't let the devil get you down. Don't even waste your time on these false prophets out there that go against this book. Uh, do we have eternal security? Yes. Um, you know, Go down through the list. Um, is salvation really a, does it really produce a changed life? Mm -hmm. Yep. Do you call upon the name of the Lord to be saved? Yes, absolutely. Don't let the devil's minions try to sway you from that stand. So that is going to be it. And I thank you very much for watching.